Sub Devils. <laughs> Sub Devils. J Dog here with his first goddamn dorky ass fucking Zoom meeting ever. Took us a while to figure this shit out, huh, Matt? Two fucking knuckleheads trying to figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to the modern age, uh, you know, whether we like it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't too bad. I mean, well, the thing is, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's just, you know, just getting it all goddamn down pat. I want to make sure because I've actually, have you ever watched those uh, uh, videos? Well, you said you don't watch YouTube videos, but I have for podcasts and shit. And guys like, dude, this is our, it's like two hours long. Like, this is our second titty because the fucking dumbass forgot to hit record. Oh, I, be I believe it. God. Two hours, so that's some real patience. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, also too, if I cut it short, it's only because, to my knowledge, I don't, we only have forty-five minutes. I think that's what it says. I think, I think we have forty minutes is the limit with Zoom. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so if it cuts out abruptly, then that means it ain't to notify me. If it gives me a countdown, then we're gonna speed it up. Um, because I wasn't gonna pay for the shit when I'm. I don't know. If, I mean, I, at this point, maybe I'll do another Zoom, but I prefer to do the shit in person. Because it's, yeah, it's 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 always more organic for sure. Actually, but. <laughs> Both your videos, the audio is the suckiest. Right. So I figure, you know, maybe the third time's the charm. <laughs> well, actually, yours in the, fir the first King, because the very first uh, interview I did on my channel was with King Folly, and I didn't have microphones for that, but it sounds pretty good. But your your second video you did, those were microphones, and I didn't think it sounded like shit. There was parts that are a little windy that are low, um, but I was like, why the fuck are the microphones working? Because everybody else, loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lucky, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's it. I'm just lucky. Yeah, just like goddamn me. So yeah, I mean, so you're going, you're starting this goddamn tour, so we can do a third one, goddamn it. Just about to think of something. <laughs> At this point, run out of shit to ask. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to start thinking of topics. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were one of the the first people that I thought about uh, when we were doing this tour, when we were planning it or whatever. Um, and we were, it was already kind of in the works when the last time that we spoke on the Cavalera tour. But uh, obviously, you know, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch especially in this business you know shit changes all the fucking time and falls through so um so yeah and, and when we announced th this tour the for those of you who don't know the tour is called decay decades um it's 25 years since the first album so uh in celebration of that and a bunch of vinyl reissues that are coming out we're just doing stuff from the first three albums and the hendale split on this tour and um we announced the tour on obviously on social media and drew Elliot messaged me and he's like, I saw your thing about the set list, but, but will J dog be happy? And I was like, never. <laughs> Wait, no, so Drew, Drew, <laughs> Drew Elliot asked you that. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Dude, it's so funny when guys like that, like actual, you know, you know, notable names in the scene ask about myself or whatever, because I, I mean, I know, I, I know he knows who I am because he orders uh -huh. from us. And I, he came up to us way before I was doing the channel, maybe like 2015, maybe even 14 or so at Maryland Death Fest. And he introduced himself. But uh, guys, like, I don't know if they watch my shit or not. I mean, just like you even right. said, you're like, you're like, I never seen your videos. I don't watch YouTube. So, like, um, I assume there's a lot of that because even myself, I'm the same. The metal scene, people ask, like, hey, what did you think of this video this guy's take? I was like, dude, I don't I don't watch metal on YouTube at all. I was like, I just sure. don't. Because I was like, realistically, it's. I kind of don't care what people's other op their opinions are. I was like, I, I, music to me is a personal thing that I just listen to and make up my own goddamn mind. So I don't I feel the need. And I'm around at 24 seven. I was like, I, I don't really need to oh, listen yeah. to something about it. <laughs> so I don't. So, uh, so, so I, I kind of forget that not everybody's like that, especially, I guess if I was 15 in today's times, when you're the most excited, probably would be listening to metal shit on YouTube. And I Absolutely. forget, I, I would forget be that like this. On it all day, and and that in band camp, I think I would just be on like nonstop. Although fifteen year olds probably use something that's newer than band camp that I don't know about. But you know, just the idea that you could listen to like hella demos basically for free, and you can download a bunch of them for free is was like amazing. You know, that would have been so great as as a fucking teenager. I would have lost my shit. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, so I always forget about that because I'm like, yeah, personally, I don't care. I was like, but you know, they do because I. It blows my mind that anybody gives a shit what I have to fucking say. So, why, why, why are you gonna listen to what I, I was like? Who cares what I think? You know. So well, clearly, clearly, people do, and you know, I mean, you're one of the people that, like, with Exhumed, I think, because hi, John. I, I, company. <laughs> John wants you to say canoe. It's goddamn fucking canoes, man. Woo! <laughs> so apparently, apparently, John, who I don't know, John, who uh, John Tardy. 
Uh, no, John John Foster, the drummer for Necropsy Odor. Okay, uh, I didn't know who's yeah, he, on. Apparently, he watches too. That, huh? He does. Yes, him and his brother Michael both watch. So, I, I think they'll be mildly titillated about this. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. Actually, here's a quick question, actually, talking about because you came on twice. Has anyone come up to you at shows in other states and mentioned that they saw you on my videos or anything? They have. I think you know because like a lot of press interviews that you do. You know, there's so many outlets, blogs, and, you know, various YouTube channels and stuff. And there's so many of them that sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, like, if there's any impact, you know, if you're really, like, moving the needle. But when the interviews with you are definitely some of the ones that people comment on and have the most comments on on YouTube. So, uh, you know, there's you're not just screaming into the void. There's somebody, <laughs> somebody hears you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, but then, and the people that came up to you, that watched your videos, did they like what you had to say or did they, how did they like your? I, I think usually they're just like, oh man, like Jared Dog was really busting your balls, man. That was hilarious. <laughs> 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 well, uh, well, dude, actually, the one that went up today is the band Fluids. I when, I did oh, that out in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, dude, I fucked with them. Some people, the, the guy was like, dude, this is like your best one yet. Because <laughs> the one, well, the, they got a new singer, dude. He shows up in shorts and these fucking basketball shoes. I'm like, dude, you got to be fucking kidding me, man. <laughs> so I was, like, I, I was like, I'm having a field day on this guy on camera. So, but yeah, you know, he took it well. So, I mean, because that's the funniest one. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, you know, at some of the interviews that you do where people are like really like reverential oh it's an honor to talk to you and all this it's like jesus mm -hmm. fuck christ dude it's just a death metal band like let's just talk <laughs> you know yeah. so it's you know and obviously i've known you for a long time so it's completely normal for you to give me shit and it's good you know yeah yeah i i, I welcome it you know because sometimes i think with the stuff that we do i'm always like surprised that more people aren't giving us more shit i'm always like huh Okay, I guess we got away with it. I guess it's okay, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, they're, they're not ripping on your, 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 you're always afraid you're going to put a record out, they're going to completely tear it apart. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like uh, it feels inevitable, you know. It's like you do this for a really long time, and somewhere in there, there's going to be a stinker, you know, that'll catch you by surprise, kind of thing. Who well, uh, seems, but who, what's out of all of them, then, I guess, exhumed, gruesome, anything, which seemed to be the most like bat that you got the most bad press? We're like, man, this sounds sucked. Jeez. <laughs> is, is there a particular one or uh, i think um oh fuck i'm trying to remember you know i don't know there's definitely ones that i think are are kind of shitty i mean honestly the word the one that got the worst reviews was gore metal like that was yeah, like that, yeah yeah <laughs> you know I, going yeah. back we're doing a, a whole like band documentary with all this old footage and old photos and stuff and we've interviewed a bunch of the former members and i was going through the press clippings that they sent us and i was like man there's like you know not a ton but more than three or four like one star reviews which is just something you just don't really see you know <laughs> well, so i kind of like take that as a badge of honor actually <laughs> yeah i mean i guess at the time i thought nothing of it because so when i first met you slaughter cult was not out yet it was out like in two months or something do you know okay. what the story was so when you guys get you know, slaughter cult you guys the very first time I saw you was when you were supposed to open up for Mayhem on the Grand Declaration of War. <laughs> and in Cleveland, for whatever reason, Mayhem canceled. Yes. And you guys end up playing for free. And to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm almost positive Slaughter Cult wasn't even out yet, but maybe you had copies of it because it was coming out in a month. It was something like that. Do you remember That's that? That's right. It was either like about to come out, like within a couple of weeks, or had just come out and was just shipping or something but yeah i remember i remember that night because somebody changed the marquee when mayhem didn't play yeah, the gay ham yeah 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 and, dude, uh, I know that, that, that was the fucking funny dude i've told this i said that accidentally in my channel i'm like i was like dude i never listened to anything by gay ham after grand declaration i figured it that's just like why would you dude, right. people in the comments were rolling right i was like i was like <laughs> that's not something i made up i was like that was like common knowledge back then yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I remember that that night we went and played like in a rehearsal space that Dawn of the Dead set up like that afternoon, if I remember correctly. Oh. I can't I can't remember if they had bus problems or there was I think it was like a business decision of some sort, and I don't know. 
Uh, it's 20 something years ago now, so I don't really remember clearly, but for whatever reason, they didn't play. Nobody was like ill or injured or whatever. They either couldn't get there. Or there was a business issue. And then, yeah, Don took us to a rehearsal space and we ended up playing for like, you know, I don't know, like 30, 40 people maybe. And it was well, actually like, that was there. It wasn't a rehearsal space. It was an actual club that did have shows. Was it? Okay. It was a different club that you weren't going to play. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean, it was a, really just small, a though. smaller club. I think it's the um, it's the one that's upstairs. You go up to. Uh, it wasn't the one with the boat though. The fantasy. It's um, Chase knows the name because he corrected me. We saw uh, Dark Moon played there as well. Up okay. Level maybe it was called. We met a bunch of other that's... shows, but the band Dark Moon, Black Metal Band, played there. Okay. Um, big same thing, dude. There's like 20 people, but no, that was an yeah. actual club. I think it was a oh, club okay. without a bar. Did, did it have a bar? Do you remember that? I don't think it did because I thought yeah. it was like where some. I guess, but dude, back things. I didn't even. I didn't even drink at all. I mean, Grant, I would have been allowed to legally then. Anyway, so maybe <laughs> I thought nothing of it. Uh, so yeah, coming to think about it, maybe it was just a rehearsal space that had shows every now and again because I've been there for several shows. Yeah, it seemed like uh, I, you know, and again, this is a long time ago. So I, I, the main thing I remember is we played in a small room that was full of people even though it wasn't that many people and Don, <laughs> Don Slaughter helped us and it ended up being like a super fun night you know um and it's I don't know man that like that's the kind of things that I sort of enjoy that we do that I think a lot of other bands maybe don't you know in those kinds of situations I remember we did uh we were, we were out with Carcass and Obituary in Richmond and it was an early show for some reason and then we ended up somebody knew somebody and we just ended up playing like a house party you know this was like nine years ago or eight or nine years ago like and we just were like yeah there's a fucking party like sure a little house show let's play it um so uh, you know because those sort of spontaneous weird things are always kind of like the most fun and interesting you know um but yeah that, that was a really good night i remember just you know talking with with kanya that night and in his fucking red pants and all that shit about, you know, yeah. you know, what's the most fucking metal things is like, you know, a hot chick and like some kind of car. And then like a really like tough cop with like mirrored sunglasses. Like I was like a cop, like what the fuck, Jim? No, <laughs> I I've that. heard a lot of his lines, but I never heard that one, but he had, he had, he had shit for all kinds of stuff. Like he had the weirdest but... thing. I was like, I get that that's like a hard dude, but I was, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he was. Oh, dude, that's he was, what's a, part of my uh, lingo and shit I do on the channel, charisma. It was definitely influenced by, he's one of them, oh. that that's brought uh, to it. So, I mean, some people think that uh, I'm a gatekeeper, an elitist, and all this. I'm like, dude, you got fucking no I mean, he was like me times 100. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I'm like, I'm laid back and shit and, and, and very right. conservative and and very open-minded compared to him. So <laughs> my thing is always like, there's a lot of shit that I don't like, but it's like, Hey man, if people like it, fucking cool. It's like, you know, at least they're, you know, making their own decisions and I'm not, I'm not the boss of anybody. However, I got my own opinions and you know, yeah, it's a little bit different for me because in the professional arena or whatever, you know, like going out there and playing shows and needing to, you know, you need to get along with a lot of people. So even if I think, oh, that band sucks, I'm like, no, oh, it's not for me. Because, you yeah. know, it's like... No, you never, I told you, to be honest, I, I'm sure I've burned a few bridges as far as sure. I want to do an interview or something because uh, I've talked shit about a band. I'm like, well, well why? I was like, I'll just tell you. Because, yeah, matter part of it, too, like, it's funny you say it. Like, I don't give a shit either. Like, there's stuff I like and the people like it. I'm cool with it. But the thing is, is since, you know, I got kind of, I want to say pushed into a channel, but kind of at the same time, you know, so it's expected. I was like, it's going to be just it's got to be somewhat entertaining. So I was like, I got to need to elaborate on why I don't like it and bring some enthusiasm to it. If I just say I don't like it, then it's fucking lame. And the bands that take it personally, I'm thinking, dude, I didn't rape your mom. Like, what do you, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, I it's mean, not that serious. Once you make a record, it's like, it's not yours anymore. People are going to react to it and how they're going to react to it. And honestly, like, I don't know, going back to that one star review shit, it's like, I would much rather somebody be like, this album fucking sucks. I can't stand this band. It's the fucking stupidest shit ever. Than being like, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, I guess. You know, it's like if you're getting a reaction, then you know, a at reaction. Out to them. Yeah, What's yeah. that? At least stood out in some way. Yeah, totally, man. You know, because the worst thing somebody can be is like, oh, it's okay. It's like, oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, pile of I've forgotten more metal than you know. Because there's so many yeah. records you've heard that you just like, yeah, I know I heard it, but I don't remember it for shit. You know, dude, it's about? tough, man. 
it's just like band after band after band. And so a lot of the records I hear and barely remember are fucking killer. It's just yeah. that, you know, you only have X so amount of space. room. <laughs> yeah. All the shit that you heard when you were 16 is still like taking out that real estate. So it's hard, yeah. to, you know, it's hard to remember the great band that you saw last week or whatever. And yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to ask earlier when it got brought up that uh, first show that attended for you, and you talk about core metal getting bad reviews. And I guess it's perfect timing for this goddamn tour since you guys be playing old stuff. So, yeah, it was me, Eric, and Chase. We met you and Cole and Bud and uh, Mike and all them. Obviously, we're like, oh, yeah, this is the greatest shit. And had you sign stuff and get photos. Right. So you were used to seeing reviews, one-star reviews. This sucks. When we came up to you and basically treat me like Metallica, were you like, <laughs> this is what was that? Was that the first time ever? Was that weird? Was it like, Jesus Christ, this is all, like, what? the hell these fucking weirdos like what like what what what, like or do you think anything of it i i don't don't even know i guess because at the time i just thought yeah you know they're on relapse record of course you know everyone likes them like (laughs) fucking brutal (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) what's it was it was a little weird you know we were kind of getting used to the fact that people like were aware of the records but i think what made you guys stand out to us was just how into not just exhumed obviously but just how into death metal you guys were Uh, and it was just really like refreshing seeing these kids that were just you know living and dying for these albums you know because i mean cole and i i remember saying that you guys reminded us of ourselves a little bit when we were kids because it was just like waiting for whatever was going to come out next and you know trying to you know dub demos and give them to your friends and and talk about whatever seven inch and whatever demo and stuff and it's just real passion for it that you guys had and, and you know and still have and that's what's cool about the label is that it's an out it's just an outgrowth of that you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, for for us it was being in a band for you guys it's doing the, the label and everything yeah. and so i just thought it was really refreshing i was like these kids aren't posers <laughs> <laughs> well dude it's funny like, that very and that very night on my gore medals uh it was cold you wrote kill posers. <laughs> <laughs> so there was still that lingo going. You guys were still young enough to kind of somewhat care about that stuff back then. <laughs> you, know? so you got to the stage now, you're almost 50, and you're like, ah, just whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I just think, you know, uh that's a the posers game is for that's for the kids. It's for the scene to regulate itself, you know. Yeah. And it's not really seemly for uh it's not a good look for a 50-year-old man to look at some Sure. Kid who's like could be his child and be like, your taste of music sucks. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not that cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like uh so with, for, for example, like uh Cole, whatever the last time I would have saw him or whatever is probably around Anatomy is Destiny. He left right after that tour, right? Yeah, yeah. He just played a, a couple of shows for that record, and that was so. It. Yeah. Like for example, the whole uh, yeah, the Ohio story, us beating us. Like, do you even remember that shit? Does he even remember who we are or any of that? Um, like, oh yeah, yeah. He definitely does. Like, he's, yeah. has he seen that? Has he seen the videos you did on mine? Uh, or does he know about it? Or I don't know if he watches them, but I mean, he's definitely aware of the label and that you guys yeah. are doing the thing. You know, um, you know, he, he still has the, the pretty much the same music taste as he did 20 years ago you know he's so discovered I, I, like 10 new bands since then maybe and i assume uh, yeah i assume he listened to all the stuff that he grew up on but i wasn't sure how active he is in the scene or paying attention you know what I mean? yeah he doesn't he doesn't pay a ton of attention sometimes i'll just send him stuff if i hear something like um that i think he'll really like like i sent him like the last bewitcher album because i knew yeah. he would like that i sent him like the more breath stuff because i was like okay this is like this is us, man. This is our, these, these two things are kind of like where Exhumed meets. Like, this is our yeah. jam. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> and, and, he, and, he, and he still likes, he thinks that shit's cool or just. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's well into it. I think the like one band he discovered for himself, he's like, oh, do you like Evil Invaders? This is really cool. I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> but I was like, hey, you found a band on your own. Like, we, yeah. I saw these guys at a festival in, in Holland. I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so I was like, oh, he actually discovered a band that was related to somebody you knew. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, exa- exactly. Because a lot of guys, yeah, it, you know, that are in bands, it's like, I'll ask them, yeah, whatever newer bands they're into or whatever. It's, it's well, you know, friends with so and so. I'm like, dude, friends with so and so. I'm actually somebody you listen to, not, not, yeah, yeah, right. Not, you know, but yeah, no, I get it. So, <laughs> yeah, that was an answer. You guys, so for this tour, then talking back 
and leaving off an anatomy when he left. You guys aren't even doing anything on, off anatomy, are you? Or are you going up that far? We are. We're, we're doing anatomy as well because uh, Slaughter Cult and Anatomy are being reissued on vinyl, like imminently. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been announced yet because Relapse doesn't pre-announce or pre-order represses. But I can say that they will be there for the beginning of the tour. Um, yeah. Well, they will, so or they can't. Can or can't. I I, I'll, I can say that much. Okay. Um, but I don't want to, you know blow it for anybody or whatever um but yeah so we'll have the first three albums on vinyl and then you guys are doing the uh the exhumed hemdale split on vinyl right. as well which is coming any you know right around the same time yeah so, so you guys leave when? when when exactly leave for this tour the tour starts may 8th and then wraps up june 16th so so what is, is this just east coast then or it's it's all over all over the states we start we, we have like I think three days in California to start. Then we head out for Milwaukee Metal Fest. And then we continue kind of like because of the next weekend is Maryland. So we kind of had a route around because we're not doing Maryland that <laughs> fest. And then yeah. we go up into the Northeast and then we come uh, all the way back through uh, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and uh, then back up the West Coast all the way up to Seattle for the last show. Ohio is the Ohio show is, is in June, right? I think. I believe so. I can tell you. Hold on, because uh, I'll be up, I'll be at Milwaukee, but I might be leaving on Sunday, and Eric will probably still be there vending. The only reason I might be leaving is just so that way I can drive back Sunday, get back to the warehouse, you know, work on business and shit like that. So right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Thursday evening, drive down to fucking Maryland Death Fest, be fresh to Daisy for Friday. Right. It's, it's a real it's a, it's a kick in the ass that they're back to back. Yeah, it's it's a little intense. We're yeah. playing Cleveland on June second, and we're we're in the Natty on June first. That's a Saturday Sunday. So literally, so, it'll be for me that we. So it'll be literally Milwaukee weekend, then Maryland, and then Exum. All three weekends back to back. Nice. Okay. That's a that's a that's a fun month. Yeah, it's. A, I thought it was kind of. I was kind of surprised that Milwaukee came back. I was like, is this a thing people are nostalgic for? But I don't know. Well, because that do you know the whole story behind it? I. No, not not beyond the very basic details. Yeah, well, so. but, but you know, you know the guy Jamie Johnson, right? Yeah, of course. Because uh, he he's bought it out, and um, we vended there last year, which was his first thing. I talked to him in person. I did I did an interview with him too. That I'm sure you didn't watch. Got a lot of views too. Uh, his audio he's, actually worked. <laughs> I, I met him really briefly, like fucking years ago. The dude was cool as fuck. Honestly, that's what he, I said. Because people, some people, kind of like, you know, you know that, hey, I roast everybody, so they're a lot of roast me. They kind of roast me like. What are you interviewing this fucking poser for? I'm like, I don't know, dude. He's, I was like, he's a cool guy. I was like, I actually, I I mean, actually got really good vibes from him. Yeah, whatever you can say about that guy, whatever you think about Hate Breeds music, which I honestly like, I dig it. It's not my thing, but every once in a while it kind of scratches an itch. But sure. like, that dude is not a poser, man. Like, he fucking yeah. knows his shit. Yeah. Um, he actually came up to us. We were flying back from Germany in like 2000. And he was like, Hey, what band are you guys in? And I was like, uh, Exhumed. He's like, Oh yeah, Limb from Limb, man. That fucking chainsaw shit. And he's like, <laughs> I'm from Connecticut. And Gordon, who is you know uh, one of the high muckety mucks at Relapse for years, he's also from Connecticut. He's like, Yeah, Gordon sends me everything, and that fucking record was sick or whatever. And I was just like, Aren't you well, that dude? From and he's like, Yeah. I was like, Oh, hey, what's up, man? It was like, it was just like the most real, like, nice dude ever. So yeah. You know, so that, that explains why you guys keep limb from limb in every set. You're like, fuck it, big shot Jamie Jossel likes it. We got to keep it set. That's, what, that's a hit. You know what I mean? Well, we need an excuse to bring out the chainsaw. You know? Oh, yeah, so yeah, sure. It's yeah. like, or so else you, got, we... you guys think you'll never drop that from a set list? Uh, probably not. I mean, you know, it's just one of those songs that it has a good, like, bit and people yeah. know it, you know? Yeah, it is definitely uh, one of the hits. There's no question it's one of the hits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even... You know, we were kind of talking about the, this set list for this tour, and I was like, well, do we keep playing Limp from Limb and Open the Abscess, even though we play them, like, every tour almost or whatever? And the consensus was like, yeah, we probably should, because, I don't know, you know, I, I always think that the audience is not as receptive, sort of single-oriented as as the, as it is. You know, we, we play shows with Left to Die, which to me is like, you know, you can see Death to All if you want to hear, you know, pull the plug and zombie ritual and stuff. And I'm like, dude, we're playing like 
choke on it. Like, this is so cool. And it's like, well, well here's zombie ritual. And it's like, wow. <laughs> like, okay, all right. I guess, you know, it's a it's a hit. We'll play the fucking hit. Well, I guess it kind of makes sense, at least in my mind as a kid, always since I, I thought the two top death songs that were kind of like their hits, I, I just figured were the most popular, was I always thought it was Evil Dead and Zombie Ritual. That's what I thought they were. I could be totally wrong. So I thought those were like, yeah, well, of course they got to do those. Like, why would they? Those are hits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Those, those are hits. And people lose their shit every night when we play them. I mean, I guess the other thing that I forget, too, is like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 48. I've seen death like four or five, maybe six times, you know? like What was the first year you saw them? It was 90. It oh, 90, okay. Yeah. So you caught them on spiritual. You didn't get them on leprosy you down. No, it's funny. I, I got the flyer for the leprosy show, uh, which I guess they didn't actually play that night at the Stone. But I got the flyer at the very first show I ever went to in April 89, which was the Anthrax and Exodus and Halloween. So I was 13. And uh, I was like, holy shit, Death and Dark Angel are playing in San Francisco. Like, whoa. And I remember asking my parents if I could go. And they looked at the flyer and they're like, no fucking way. Like, are you? No, you're 13. Absolutely not. You know, you're not going to North <laughs> San Francisco, a neighborhood full of strip clubs to see death and dark angel. Like, nah. Funny so. little story about that. That dude is a uh, very first show I went to ever. I was 13 and the very first band I saw was death, but it was 98. Oh, wow. Yeah. With, uh, with Hammerfall, right? Yeah. And, and then, then the local band medieval. Oh yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I, I saw that. I saw that tour as well in, in San Francisco. Um, so yeah, I forget that people haven't seen death or whatever. So oh, I, I did too, because I thought like I, I almost thought that was like almost like cringe and embarrassing to say on the channel. Like, oh, my first show was not man, this fucking newbie poser. And people were like, <laughs> oh my god, you got to see that. Holy smokes! I'm like, really? Yeah, I, I saw him in '98. I was like, would have been cool if it was '88. <laughs> right. Like, I, felt, I mean, I felt late know, to the game because I don't even really count the Sound of Perseverance as a death album because it was yeah. written for. Control Denied, and it sounds like Control Denied. I mean, clearly it has the Death logo on it, and I saw him on that tour, whatever. Yeah. But, like, as a purist, like, to me, it's like, well, it's not really the Death album. <laughs> um, and I, honestly, I went to the show, I was more excited about Hammerfall. Like, I really like that <laughs> Hammerfall album. And my girlfriend yeah. at the time, like, loved that album. So we went okay. to that. And then we just kind of hung at the bar, and I was like, oh, they're going to play Zombie Ritual eventually. Because I knew, like, you know, that would be the only, like, really early song that they would play. Yeah. So, but, yeah, of it course, is, like, it wasn't many. It wasn't much old stuff at all. Maybe, was it, yeah, maybe Zombie Ritual pulled a plug. That was it, the first two albums? Maybe. The I think, yeah. 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 And then the rest of it was just all, like, yeah, later shit. Uh, so, because, I mean, that, yeah, myself, like, it was, like, it took a while for me to, like, kind of, like, spiritual healing. And I do, like, it now, here, now, here, it's kind of, like, I don't own any of the other albums, really. But I have gone back to the special reissue. I'm like, I was like, they're not bad. You know what I mean? Like symbolic and stuff. Even I'm like, you know, it's good for what it is. I was like, I just think it's a, right. you know, kind of a different band from what it started off as. Oh, totally. I mean, it's like, you know, with so many things, you got to kind of just let it be what it is. And then you can evaluate A, whether it's good and B, whether you like it. Like, I think symbolic is probably one of their best records. It's not like one of my favorite, but it's, it's clearly a very good record by a very good band like kicking ass or whatever. So, um, you know, I mostly just listen to the first three, but I do really like human as well. And, and I, you know, there's a lot to like about the other ones too. It's just, I don't listen to that kind of metal like very often, you know? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so you guys are doing first three and then, uh, are you doing anything off the, uh, Hemdale split or you don't want to reveal a uh, track? You don't want to reveal a set list at all. We have right now in the set, we have two songs from the Hemdale split. Well, three, I guess, you know, Torso. We've played Torso like a lot I said, through the years. I, I actually said that in a recent video. Somebody asked or something like that. And I was like, I, I was like, I remember they did. I was like, I talked about like seven inch songs and still, I was like, I remember Torso. I was like, but I guess I was going to say, because dude, uh, some of those uh, seven inch songs uh, are really fucking good. Like, the, like I'm not going to be like that total fucking nerd. It says our meeting will end in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. You know what we could do? If you still have a bunch we want to talk about, that we could just do two Victor videos. Sure, yeah, we, we can go back to back. That's fine. Um, yeah, if you want to do that. Unless you're like, yeah, I, I said everything I want to say. It's one more pizza. I'm out of here, dude. 
<laughs> um, the second one will probably be a little bit shorter because I'm going to go have lunch with my dad here in not too long. But yeah, um, we've we got 10 minutes. We, we can even wrap it up if you want. All right. Well, let's see where we're at in 10 minutes. And if we want to yeah. go longer, we can go longer. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, the seven inch songs, like when we were doing the first album, like Ross and Cole and myself all wanted to do three different things. I was like, we should be putting, you know, Instruments of Hell and Totally Fucking Dead, uh, Gory Melanoma and Dead Again. And I think one Indignities to the Dead I wanted to put on the record too. So, dude, you know the Indignities to the Dead? You know that story too about that seven inch and me? You know that story? I told him, again, you don't watch, but maybe I told you a person. I don't think so. I don't know. That's the very first seven inch I ever got in my life. Oh, that's so cool. And you know how I got it? You don't remember that either? You were there. Yeah. It was, oh. at the fly, it was at the Flying Machine. I think it was the third time we saw you guys. Um, was this Ohio the first time, at, at the very first time you guys played the show, I'd said, for whatever reason, you guys came back soon after that. I can't remember what, but it wasn't long. It was less than a year. I, remember, I, I right. forget what. You guys played in Ohio Death Fest, and then there was like maybe something for Anatomy as well. So it was like, in those three years, there was like four or five times you were here. And anyways, uh, third time or whatever, it was photos that me, Eric, and Chase took at the shows. And we came and you know, print doubles like, oh, maybe you guys want these. And I remember Cole's like, these are fucking great. Like, these photos are like the best photos I've seen. Like, really? Okay, right. cool. Yeah, well, they're for you. He said, oh, well, what do you want from Like, nothing. So I got to give you something. I was like, no. <laughs> so he went out and grabbed three Dignities of Dead seven inches and gave me a chase one. That was my first seven inch I got. Why the hell did he have those on that tour? It's so weird. I, don't know. I remember actually getting the. the band I, don't, I don't think they're at the merch stand. He just, he's like, he went out to the van. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why I'm like kind of surprised. Um, I remember getting the photos from you guys because I'm not sure which one of you, but you'd taken like a priority mailbox and you cut it in the shape of like this little coffin. Eric would have done that because Eric's the yeah. artist. Yeah, he's the, he's the arts, it was arts really guy. cool. I was like, I was like, this is awesome. We should keep this. And then like a week <laughs> later, at the end, I was like, what is this smash? Oh, well, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I I hear you 100%. Yeah, I'm the road, everything. Yeah, I, I can see that 100%. <laughs> yeah. No, some, that, of those uh, seven, some of those seven songs like, they are really, really good. Yeah, Totally Fucking Dead. Another song that I'm sure you guys never done. It's a little bit of a later, I guess it's old now, uh, but later than the first album. Uh, that I thought was a really good song was the split with Ingrowing, the Something Sick in This Way It Comes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. God, you put it on, you're like, this is like, this is a really good song. I don't know if we ever actually played that song live. I never heard it. I mean, dude. I was waiting again after your interview. I'm like, he's definitely hit me up for that goddamn fucking three album, first three <laughs> album set list. Nothing. So I, had, <laughs> I had one already mapped out. It's 15 tracks. Every song different stood up. I'm like, didn't hit me up. So that, well, that crowd would have left fucking pulverized. We have a uh, we we have a set list. I don't know that it's set in in stone. It's probably like. You know, it's maybe in like erasable pen, you know. So I don't know if you have any uh last minute requests, you can still. I think a song that I think is one of your guys is Hammer Smash Face. And just like, dude, even the lyrics as a kid, I don't know why, because I, you know, I follow the lyrics all the time because I was a fucking nerd, right? Uh, <laughs> I just thought the line, yeah, strict remains in the Ziploc bags collected for autopsy of the song This Axe was made to grind. That was always right. one of my favorite exhumed songs ever. And you guys that was one of, I think that one is in the maybe list because. <laughs> I did a demo of it and um and we we played it. I think we played it at Scene Extreme like years ago, like five or six years ago now, right when Sebastian first got in the band, because they had us do a set of just the first two albums um for that fest. And I think pretty sure we played it there. Um so that one is a, a maybe. I you know. It, it's like he's holding, holding, he's holding it all out on for, for Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland only. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, even you, you think like, oh, well, we're just limited to these albums. Like, it's still fucking four albums. Like, that's a yeah. lot of fucking shit. Yeah, a lot of material. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, figure, yeah. Four albums. Let's say you're doing 16 songs, four songs a piece. It's not too too bad. If, you, if you're just kind of doing math like that. It's still like under half an album because the first oh, yeah, two albums, 100%. like thirteen yeah. songs on them, and the second one, the the third one, I think has like eleven, and the Hemdale split has like ten. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, four seems kind of skimpy, you know. So it's like, um, because we were gonna do like just the first album all the way through, and we kind of talked about it, and I was like, that sounds like something that 
people think they want. And then when they get it, they're going to be like, yeah, I don't know if I really want it. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so we just decided to kind of, and with the other reissues, it just made sense to sort of do like a mishmash or whatever. Um, and, you know, th there's a few places we're not going on this tour, like uh, because of Milwaukee, we're not doing Chicago. Um, because of Maryland, we're not doing Baltimore and a few others sort of, we're like, we're not going to Florida at all. So we'll see how it does. And if, if I guess if it ends up going really well, we might do like a smaller, like add on tour and then mix it up even further, you know, because it's been, it's been kind of fun just like going through some of these songs. I'm like, I was like, Oh shit. I kind of forgot about this one. This is like, yeah. you know, <laughs> some of them are like better than you think. And then some of them are like, well, this isn't as great as I remember. <laughs> Yes. Well, so for the uh, tour too, in case I don't know what you guys plan or not, you can comment and say we are doing that or no comment or whatever. Because I don't know what you want to be surprised and whatnot. But if it, if, it, if it was me in charge of management, business side, a few things I would do for this tour is one, I'd make sure I had a. a it's a, I'm a little indifferent unless they're cool designs I'd buy them. I would personally have a shirt for all three albums, the first three, t-shirt design. I would personally have a separate tour shirt design. Maybe something that you drew because your art's always cool. That Left to Die logo is awesome as fuck. Thank um, you. Something like that. So you'd have four shirt designs. Um, I would personally, whoever's willing to do it, don't pay somebody. Somebody will do it for fucking free. Is get as many of the sets, somebody to record it. And that way you just have it in the oven for maybe like a possible down the road. If Relapse or Hells or whoever. Hey, we're just going to do a live, official live exhumed album. Because other than those two LPs that just kind of recently came out. You guys don't have technically an official live, like live cannibals, my cannibal core, something like that. And right. from what I heard, well, he said it point blank, and it's not like I'm spilling the beans. Uh, he said it in a uh, recent interview, uh, Glenn Benton. Uh, Deicide's releasing a live album uh, coming up soon uh, off the Legion tour. And I think Mayhem did that for that Dave Mysterious one. It seems like kind of like a thing yeah. for their classic shit. People kind of want to hear, and especially since you think gore metal sounds like shit, granted you recorded it. But I'm sure I know if you think core metal sounds like shit, you definitely think Hemdale sounds like shit. So you kind of, <laughs> what do the songs sound like? It's the closest imitation to uh, today's lineup in today's era. Right. So it gets captured that both from your perspective and the fans. And if you get a few different uh, cities recorded because somebody has a soundboard or whatever, you get the best sounding one, best performance. Right, and you mix and match like all. And, and if you don't want to do anything, that's why I said I wouldn't pay anyone because someone will do it for free. Somebody will record their fucking phone for free, so there's no need to pay anyone. <laughs> Somebody's always recording now, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that because um, the uh, the design for the tour shirt and is also the design for the the DVD thing that we did, which is oh, so, <laughs> so you drew that. Yeah. I did draw this. Yes. Yes. Every yeah. once in a while, I still find time to like draw shit or whatever, and it just seemed appropriate, especially because this is sort of like going back to the roots or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think all of those suggestions are are sound, and the vast majority of them had occurred to me, but they're all very good. You know, as a guy that runs a, a record label, like you, you know, well, so I see, I go, by, I go by what <laughs> I would want. I go by what I would want as a fan. I go right. by what I would what I would think, especially if I was young and I missed out on those records, and I also go by. I attend all these shows. I was at the Mayhem tour. I was at the DSI right. tour. Morbid Angel coming and all that shit. And I seen, I also watch what does the crowd like and how does it go over? You know, at, at Milwaukee Metal Fest last year, Anthrax played almost exclusively only old songs. It was all songs I knew. So they had been all old. Even like, because pretty much right. when you get to persistence of time, I'm like, eh. eh. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, and, and, and to do the, it was one of the best shows I've seen. I'm like, every song was great. It sounded great. I think a lot of people are, are are um, catching on to that you know i mean dude nobody's going to see metallica and be like dude i want to hear such and such off reload i mean maybe they are because you're a fair fan but for the most part people want to hear the first five albums yeah i mean i think um well they, they, that 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 band might not be the best example because they have sort yeah, of it's, like, it's extreme bands. i know but, but uh but yeah i mean i think you know especially when you kind of have like when the career starts getting longer and longer you know, you just realize that at a certain point, you're just kind of like, we want to give people what they want. And, you know, rather than sell them on whatever our thing is, because we've already sold them on what our thing is. And, you know, it kind of becomes more about enriching.